Hey everybody, it's Jake, and welcome to day three of the Learn SketchUp tutorial series. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of this donut. We no longer need it. I'm going to pull this house back just a little bit so I have some room here. All right, so we're going to go over groups and components today. So go ahead and go up to rectangle right here, and we're just going to do a 10 by 10 rectangle. Go ahead and release that, 10 comma 10. All right, zoom in there with the with the scroll wheel. Ah. All right, we're gonna use our push-pull tool. We're gonna bring that up 120 inches, so just type 120. All right, so if we wanted to move this, I'm gonna move this over here to the corner of that shed there. And then if we tried to move it afterward, or even try and select it, all this stuff kind of gets in the way. Even if I were to move it to this edge here, I'm just gonna move it there again real quick, and you don't need to do this, I'm just kind of showing you. If I wanted to pull this beam away, one, it's hard to select because there's all these other lines that will come with it. And then I can't because this house basically melts all around it because it wants to follow it. I'm going to undo that real quick, pull it away. Ah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the whole thing and we're going to create our first group. So how you do that is you right click right here and then you go down to make group. So now we have this post as a single group. Now I need to make two posts because this pergola is going to have two posts. So I need to drag a copy. So I can do control copy or control C and then I can do control V and I'll have a copy right there. There's actually a better way of copying and pasting. So I'm just going to delete this one real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this whole group. Now you can just select it by clicking once. You don't need to do that but just select the whole group and then we're going to hit the move tool right there and we're gonna drag it and we're just gonna hit control and then we're gonna drop you see that of course you saw that you're watching the video we are just dragging a copy by selecting it again now that it's a group we can just select it once we're going to hit the move tool. I just did my shortcut, but you can click the move tool if you haven't set up your shortcuts yet. And you'll see that it created a single copy. And you can do it along these axes as well. Lock it just like that. Okay, so we want to line these posts up with the shed. So we're just going to use the move tool again. And line them up with the edges. Go ahead and select that one as well and then line them up with the edge right there. So if we wanted to change the height of these posts and I wanted them to actually be nine six instead of 10, if I double click in that group, I can access the individual pieces within it. So if I hit push pull tool right over here and I bring it down nine, uh, six inches, you'll see that this one was not changed. It just stays the same because it's its own entity. But in construction, these are going to be the same height. So how do we make this fast? How we will do that is we'll just go ahead and delete this group and we're going to actually explode this group. So right click and hit explode because we just want the individual pieces again. And then we're going to select the whole thing. We're going to right click and we're going to make it a component. Make component and we're going to do post no description, we're not going to glue it to anything yet, and we will replace selection with component, and we're going to hit create. So now we have a component. Then we will drag that component over by pressing the move tool right there, and we'll select this edge right there. As we start to slide it, just hit control and line it right up, holding down shift, line it right up with that edge right there. There you go. So if I go into any of these components, if I double click and then I push pull, you'll see that it changes with it just like that. Perfect. So now we're going to create the cross beam that goes right here. Let's go up to rectangle and just come down here anywhere. And we're going to make this one 4 by 12. 4 dash 12. There we go. I'm going to zoom in on it. And now we want to make this a new component. So we're just going to go ahead and right click there after we have it all selected. We're going to do make component. And we're going to make this titled crossbeam. I want to 
capitalize that. There we go. Uh, replace selection and create. Now double click in here. And let's just pull this up right now. Let's just pull it up. Let's just go with five feet, so 60 inches. So that we can just get that 3D look. Because we're actually, we need to rotate this. So how we rotate this cross beam is we go up into it just real close so we can get a better shot of it. And we're going to select the move tool. And you'll see as I hover over it, there's these plus, these red pluses. If I click those, it'll let me rotate it. You'll see right down here on the angle, it'll give you what angle it's going to set to. So if I just go to zero and just let it go, and if you can't get that zero right on, you can always just type in zero and it'll make it that angle. And then you can hover over it again, and then you can pull that up. And we're going to want that angle to be 90. So I'm just going to drop it at 95 and type in 90 myself. And now we have it perfectly how we want it. Let's pull this cross beam up and place it right on top of our post right there. I'm going to grab the center of this component. I'm going to make it lock to the center of that post. Now we're going to bring it down. Let's go ahead and hit the move tool right here. We're just going to line it up right there. Perfect. So let's go ahead and double click. Use the push pull tool to pull this out. We're going to pull it out 18 inches. So just release it and then type in 18. And so with this one, what we need to do is we need to just pull this right up to that edge. It'll lock. Go ahead and drop it there and then pull it out another 18 from there. So now we have two sets of components. We have this post as a component, and then we have this crossbeam as a component. So to manage these components and just get an overview of what components are in your model, you're going to go up to Window right here, and we're going to select Outliner. And then we're just going to pull that right over here. And now you can see all the different existing components. So we have the shed model, which is just the file. We have this component of the crossbeam. And you'll see that I was able to select the crossbeam by clicking right there. Also here, I can select each individual one of these posts right here. The next thing we want to do is go over to our shed real quickly, select the whole thing. We're just going to make that a group for now, not component, make group. So just make that a group. And then let's select all three of these. And we're going to slide them back right up to the shed. And then let's pull them out 10 feet. So 120 is what you can type. All right, perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the beams that come across here. And the first thing we need to do is our supporting beam. So let's go ahead and copy this by dragging it and then hitting control and then dropping it right there. Now we're going to come up here to the rectangle tool and we're going to make these ones four by, let's make these ones four by 10 as well. Let's see, four. 10. I'm going to come in here, select the whole thing, make it a component. Shader beam is what I'll call these ones. And hit create. Everything's good. All the settings are good. Okay, then we're just going to select that. We're just going to rotate it right now. But instead of doing it the way before, how we moved it, like this. We gathered one of these and we were able to rotate it that way. What we're going to do instead is we're going to come up here to the rotate tool, select that right there. We're going to try and line this up so that it's on the right axis. It should turn red, or if you're doing it in a different, you know, if you're building your shed the opposite, a different direction than I am, it, it may be a different, but just make sure that we're going to be rotating it upward here. So mine's red. I'm just going to select once with this, and you'll see that I need to click again. So I'm going to select that right there, and then I'm going to rotate this up. You'll see right down here that there's this angle that we have. And I'm just going to lock it to angle 90, and there we go. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out by double clicking into it, and I'm just going to pull it out. Well, actually, let's just put it up there real quick by selecting it, going to the Move tool, or not the arrow, the move tool. And we will pull it right up here. 
and I'm going to just lock it right to this edge. Then I'm going to drop this down now while I'm here. I'm just going to drop it down two inches. Double click inside of it. Go to your push pull tool. Bring it back. Right there. Okay. We're going to deal with this connection right here a little later because we actually need to have more roof coming out over here anyways. So for now, we're just going to leave that how it is. Now we're going to drag a copy of this beam over. So we're going to select it. We're going to go to the Move tool. And we're going to drag it right over. And then we're going to just tap Control once, Command on Mac. Line it up, hold down Shift if you need to keep it on that red axis and then release it. Now before we do anything else, what you're gonna do, this is something new we're gonna learn here. We're gonna type six backslash right there. You'll see at the bottom right, I can't move my mouse, otherwise I'll lose it. But down at the bottom right on length, I did six backslash, hit enter, and you'll see that it dragged six equal copies along that plane that we just did. It's pretty awesome, huh? So watch, I'll undo it again, just real quick. I'm gonna drag this from that corner right there if I wanted to, I could just click like down here or over here, or let's say lock it right there. If I released that, and then if I did 12 backslash, it created copies. So that's a good way to create a set of stairs. I'm gonna undo that real quick and do what we're actually trying to do. Do the move tool, select that corner, hit control once, lock it there, type six backslash, enter, and then we have those equal copies. Now I'm gonna double click inside this component. I'm gonna pull it out. See how it just updates all of them for us? That's the power of components. That's what makes them so great. I'm gonna pull that out 18 inches. Sweet, there we go. Now we're really building this pergola out. We wanna make all of these shader beams one group so that we can access it. So if we tried to access just these shader beams, see how as we're selecting them, it's just click, it's just highlighting each individual one. Well, what we can do is we can just hold down shift, select that whole group. We can right click and we can select make group. And you'll see that it's created this folder system for us. So we can click that group right there and we can actually select what well, we can select within that group and it'll say, show that they're all selected. But let's go ahead and rename this group right there. And we can say shader beams. This is really good to keep a map of everything that we're doing, especially if, we're, if you're going into architecture. If you're using SketchUp for architecture, it's very important to keep those together. All right, we're going to make these one group as well. Oh, too far down, make group. And we're going to rename this as well. We're going to make these cross beams. There we go, same with the posts, right click, make group, where am I, okay. And then we're gonna do a rename, posts. Great, so now we have everything nicely organized. But what if we wanted to create another version of this pergola, but we wanted to use these already existing components. So if I come in here, let's say we want these beams and I'm just gonna drag a copy of, well, we only need one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select inside of it, hit copy, and then I'm gonna paste it right there. But let's say we wanted to create like our own version of our pergola. If I double clicked within here, you'll see that it's gonna affect those. Well, what you can do is you can right click on this and you can do make unique. Now we've created a new component right over here. You'll see it says post number one. That is our new component. And you can see that I can push pull it and it's not gonna affect these two that already exist. And we can also drag a copy of it over and you'll see that it has its own new freshness to it. Undo that real quick. Now there is an exception to changing the length on these beams without making a new component, and that is scaling. So if I click inside this, look again, see how if I change anything, it does the same thing to the others? But check this out. If I scale this, if I come over here and use the scale tool, 
I can actually just scale this individual one, but it still stays as part of the group or the it still stays as part of a component. Watch, if I double click inside of it and I pull it out, you'll see that it's still making those because this is still part of, it's gonna be kind of difficult to explain, but this is still these components. It's just being shown and it's being represented at a different scale. That makes sense. I hope that doesn't confuse you. But yes, you can actually make changes to a component. And why that might be useful is, let's say that we wanted to change the size of this post, but we wanted it to have the same material, right? We wanted it to have the same material as these because if I were to dump a wood material on top of this, we're going to cover materials in the next episode. But I wanted this one to be a little bit longer, but I didn't want to have to dump material on this and then come back to this component and dump a material on this longer one. Um, I would just dump a material on this and it would change for all of these because this one still holds the same properties as these original components. Hope that's making sense. I'm just going to undo that scale real quick. There we go. Okay, I think that covers enough of components for now. There's definitely a lot more to it, but that's the basics. So let's go ahead and go on to day four of the Learn Sketchup tutorial series. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. My name is Jacob Williams from Wild Academy. Have a wonderful night, everybody. See you soon.